one really important fact in algebra is going to be coming next. And it's when we look at this binomial squared. So, we cannot distribute the two over a sum or over a difference. Because what does this tell us? Our base attached to the two. What is the base for that exponent? x plus 3, that entire quantity. So what this is really saying is, take x plus 3, multiply it times itself, two times in total. So we can't distribute over the sum because our middle term is going to be gone. So as we FOIL this out, what are we looking at? First, I get x squared, outer, 3x, inner, 3x, and last, we get 9. So as we combine our like terms, I get x squared plus 2 of each of these factors. So I've got 6 all together and 9 on the end. So we'll do one with a minus so you can see the same pattern is going to be happening. This quantity, this base, times itself 2 times in total. So we can't just distribute the square over the sum or difference. So let's take a peek back at this last one. If I square the first one and square the last one, I get x squared plus 9. Is that what it's really equivalent to? No, we're missing that middle term. So we can't ever distribute over a plus or a minus because we lose a significant chunk of that area of our rectangles. So, foiling out, what are we looking at? First, outer, inner, and last. So again, what happens? I get the first one, and it's squared, and I get two of both of these factors, two of this factor, I get both. Negative 6x and plus 9. So contributing back to our original problems, how do we get here? How can we sum up when we're adding or subtracting those guys? What happens? I got my first term and it's squared. We've seen that before. Then what? I have two times each of them together. So if I take the first one and the last one, I get 3x and I get that two times. So I get 2 times A times B. And in the end, how can 9 be represented with our last term? Plus the last thing squared. Okay? So that's if we have positives here. We have positives everywhere. What about if we have a negative? So what am I looking at? I still get the first term squared. But then what? I get two of each of these, and what happens with my sign there? It's negative, so I'm subtracting two times A times B, since I have a subtraction on the inside there. And what do we get on the end? It's positive, so I'm adding B squared. Whatever value is on the end. So let's use that to quickly evaluate these products, and I have some for you to try as well. So let's look at the first one. I've got the quantity x plus 3 squared. So I take the first bit, the first term is x, and I square it, and I add 2 times the first times the second. 2 times the first times the second. And I'm adding to that the last bit squared. And after you practice with this, you skip this step all together and they come out really fast. So we're looking at x squared plus 6x plus 9. Did we get out in the end what we said we did when we foiled it? Just to double check. We did. So if you don't like this shortcut or it doesn't come very quickly or naturally, you can always go back to foiling. But to continue practicing this little shortcut if you do enjoy it, I have subtraction. So what's it going to change? Just that middle, middle term. So first thing squared. And I have 2 times the first times the second. 
So I'm adding 2 times the first times the second. And the second one was negative, so you can see where that negative is coming from. And I add on my last term, it's negative 5 squared. So what do we get? 2 squared minus 10t plus negative times a negative is a positive, 25. Same pattern, but like we were talking about, the sign is going to be different in the middle. Next one. First one squared plus 2 times the first times the second plus the last bit squared. If you're not comfortable with these, boil them out. Get some practice. So we're looking at 4x squared. When we have a product in there, we do need to distribute to each, but we can't with a sum or difference. And I'm looking at 4 times 7 will give me 28x plus 49. Pretty quick. And the last one. So now starting to do it without these in-between steps. We'll see what we get. First one squared, 25x squared plus 2 times the first times the second. So 2 times the first one. I get 10x. 10x times negative 3x squared. So we're looking at negative 30 x to the third, and I'm adding on the back those last terms squared, 9x to the fourth. Okay, a lot faster if you get comfortable with those to have them come right out. So take those next three, try to use the trick. If you have to write the in-between steps, go for it. If you have to foil out, that's fine as well. But get some practice. So the first, what are we looking at? First term squared plus 2 times the first times the second. So 2x times 2 gives me 4x plus my last term squared, 4. Second one, first thing squared plus 2 times the first times the second. So I've got negative 8a and I'm adding my last term squared, 16. More complicated one down here. Nothing we can't handle. First term squared. 16x to the fourth. I'm adding two times the first times the second. I know it's going to be negative, so I'm just going to write it now. So two times four gives me eight. Eight times three. And I have x squared times x. So I have three factors of that all together. And I'm adding the last term squared, so 9x squared. Done. So much quicker when we go that route. So if you're not comfortable with using these shortcuts, stick to the traditional foiling. But if you get comfortable, it'll save you time if you can recognize the patterns that are coming out. And the last little bit to note, just to sum this up again, the important things to know from this section. Although the square of a product is the product of the square, so what does that mean? If I'm squaring a product together, I have to distribute the two. I get a squared times b squared, since there's multiplication in there. It's not true when we have a sum. So if I have a plus b squared, it's not equal to distributing over top, excuse me, a squared plus b squared because we're missing that middle term. We're missing 2ab in the middle, which is vital when we're working with these problems. So be careful, and if you don't like these again, go back to the traditional foiling method. It'll always get you there. 